I'm proud of. Two local Hawthorne girls went to all the Hawthorne schools. They attended El Camino. They went to Long Beach State, wrote a book. It's called The Pink Promise. My daughter says she's going to kill me if I brought it up. But my daughter, Michelle, and a girl named Valerie Patterson finally released their book called The Pink Project. It has to do with breast cancer and rain. So I'm wearing this tie today. I'd never wear a pink tie, but I'm wearing it to honor my daughter and her friend that, that took something in a dream and ran. That's what's part about being the mayor. A lot of people, have you seen children with dreams? My wife said she was at a chiropractor's office the other day. Young girl came up to her and says, are you Mayor Guidi's wife? And uh, he goes, yes. He goes, oh, tell him thank you very much. I was a young girl. My mom tried to get me in, into this school. We couldn't get in. We weren't living in the right area, and it happened. Those are what makes, make me feel good. The cheerleaders, St. Joseph's, uh, the Leos, the Diconians, the, the Knights. These are all young people. All the children I ever coached in AYSO that are now 21 to 26 years old that approach me on the street, and they remember. That's all I want. Just remember all the good. Every decision I make as the mayor of your city is based on how will it affect my family, how will it affect my daughters, and how will it affect my new granddaughter. We're here to stay. And I know my colleagues feel the same way. We're not just a city council that shows up twice a month. Every decision I make, I pray on it, and I say, how will it affect my family in the next five years? So everything you see in this front row from Centex, William Lyons Homes, um, Elite Homes, I know I'm missing somebody, Gold's Gym, um, Jeff Lee, Lee Homes, how will that affect? Hawthorne had a bad reput reputation in the years of overbuilding, destroying the city with apartments and condos, but guess what? It's reversed. Now we have, we're building top quality housing and homes and retail and commercial. I mean, I'm looking through this room and it's incredible to see the faces. I wish I could name each one of you and talk about an experience. Our car dealerships that are here that are big supporters of the city, the local businesses, um, Ted's Donuts, King's Donuts, um, Shafra. Um, um, I got my energy, I ate dinner there last night before the council meeting, best chicken kebabs you'd want to eat, but there's a lot of you in here that play an important role to the city of Hawthorne. So today, I'm honoring you. I'm saying thank you to you. Um, and with the Daily Breeze, those headlines weren't true, okay? Don't, don't take that serious. That was just a video, okay? Please. It's a joke. Smile. Come on, smile. Jan, thank you. And thank you to all of you for being here, for supporting not only the Hawthorne Chamber of Commerce, but the entire community all year round. I want all of the members of the chamber that are here, raise their hands or stand up. You're the major, come on, raise your hands if you're a member of the Hawthorne Chamber of Commerce. That means if you're a business, an individual, you're the major stockholders of our community. You have made an investment in the city of Hawthorne and it's our responsibility to make sure you have the greatest returns. This is a tribute to our community to see Many of our neighboring elected officials, school elected officials, city commissioners that are here today. I'd like all my commissioners in the city of Hawthorne to please stand up. Come on, let's give them a round of applause. Remember, these are people that are giving up their evenings and weekends to participate into what makes Hawthorne great. As many of you know, I've had the privilege and honor of serving on this city council for almost 16 years. As your mayor for the last 14 years, during these 14 years, we have embarked on a journey to transform the city of Hawthorne into a contender. And I have all the punches to prove it. In the South Bay, I say we because some of the big or small in each and every of one of you in this room has helped along on this journey. Today is a tribute to you. As your elected leaders, my fellow council members and I have had some challenging years in the past, but in many ways, 2006 has been an extremely successful year. We have had many financial hurdles to leap, some of them handed to us by our state and federal government, but we have leaped over them and keep on running. 
I mentioned that 2006 was an extremely successful year. Why is that? Let me elaborate and introduce you to some of the people that have contributed to these last years of success. I'll start with Lisa Miller, Director of Licensing Code Enforcement. Lisa, will you please stand? And your staff that's here. <laughs> staff, come on. Don't be shy. Now remember, if I call you and I ask you to stand and you don't stand, I've got a lot of jokes in here I can pull out on you. <laughs> under, under Director Miller's charge, over $8 million in general fund monies were collected. This $8 million was comprised of various permit fees, fines, license fees, for example, business license fees, alarm fees, permit fees, dog license fees, and filming permits. Hawthorne has become known as the most film-friendly city in the South Bay. The Business License Division welcomed nearly 350 new businesses and processed almost 6,000 business licenses. Director Miller is also responsible for code enforcement, graffiti removal, animal control programs. Lisa Miller has implemented a zero tolerance task force that targets code violators with violations such as illegal garage conversions, illegal street vendors, and various others. Last year, this task force investigated 3,700 violation, resulting in 85% correction. And what does this mean for you? This means cleaner neighborhoods, better neighborhoods, and higher property values. I've been told by others that Hawthorne and, and Mayor Pro Tem um, Bradford was telling us a couple months ago that he was wondering why doesn't Hawthorne have graffiti. Unfortunately, we told them we do have graffiti, and we're just like other cities in the South Bay, but we have a team under Lisa Miller, our, our graffiti removal, last year, Councilman, they removed two million square feet of graffiti only in the city of Hawthorne. Please give them another round of applause. Now let me introduce you to our new chief of police, Mike Hefner. Please stand. And all of the police officers that are here in the room representing the Hawthorne Police Department, please stand. Let's give them the deserved round of applause they deserve. I look at the men and women on a Hawthorne Police Department as I look at our military that are defending our Constitution overseas. These are the people that have given their lives and are giving their lives freely without any reservations. And, and General, to you and your, your team, I congratulate you and I continue to support you and the military for what you're doing to protect this country. Can I have the LA Air Force Space Commander Group and General Police Dance so everyone can see these are the people that are keeping the war out of America. Thank you, General. Michael Hefner assumed the position of Chief of Police in August 2006. Chief Hefner has been with the department for over 30 years. As I said, he truly hit the ground running. His goals are to return to community policing, continue to reduce crime, and restore police staffing levels. And I got a little insight for you. If anybody knows anybody who wants to be a policeman, we're hiring right now a lot of cops. So if anybody at the military wants to come over, General, let us know. <laughs> Our fine officers have seized nearly $1 million worth of drug money, conducted truancy sweeps, driver's license checkpoints, DUI task force, and a handicapped sting, giving the true meaning of community policing. The next guy I have to introduce, I have to tell you, stands out. I mean, all of our people are the best. This guy is a guy who really puts the pedal to the metal. I'd like to introduce Arnie Shabbeer, our Chief of General Service. Arnie, will you please stand? And I'd like all the orange shirts and all the maintenance guys, Park, stand up, guys. Mark Hardison, come on. These are the people that make Hawthorne look beautiful. Uh, 
There's nowhere you drive down Hawthorne Boulevard that you do not see an improvement. And these are the men and women that make this possible. Center Island guys look great. And I'm going to announce the new thing you guys are doing on the southeast soon. Let me tell you a few things about this department, that have, what they've done to improve the city. The Rosecrans Aviation Widening, a project that was stalled for years. Rosecrans Sound Wall, 2,000 linear feet. Repaired and replaced 13,000 square feet of sidewalks, driveways throughout the city. Replaced all the street signs throughout the city. That's called fixing the broken window. Implemented a uniform newspaper rack throughout the community. Upgraded bus stops. Renovated Hawthorne Youth, Youth Camp. Hawthorne Airport electrical signing and striping improvements. Hawthorne Airport taxiway. Home improvement project. Home, um, I'm sorry, Hawthorne Municipal Pool Renovation. We intend to, I think it's spend $1.5 million of rebuilding the Hawthorne Municipal Pool along with the support of the Hawthorne Parks and Rec Foundation. This is great news for the Bodger Park neighborhood. I know we have the president here, Brent Morgan. Are you still here? Through Brent Morgan's support, leadership, and guidance, we've been able to come together with uh, uh, safe streets to school and some other funding. We'll be rebuilding the center island on Prairie, Prairie from, one, from Rosecrans to 147th and Marine between uh, Prairie and Marine. We're gonna put in a new center island, a walk path, sidewalk, some new trees and landscaping. Brent, thank you for your hard work and support and helping us accomplish that goal. And this will kick off March 1st. These are merely some of the accomplishments that Arnie's crew has undertaken. We had 16 pages last night of what Arnie's department has done to improve the community. If you think the city looks good, give them a round of applause. I have to introduce this team as actually a team. Harold Roth, Director of Planning, please stand and Ray Shun, Director of Building and Safety. Both of these gentlemen, take a look at them. This front row and a couple of the tables know who these two gentlemen are. Can we have your staff off also, also stand? Is your staff here? There they are. Stand up, guys. Before I go on, I want to let you know, we have the best inspectors, plan checkers, I think, in the South Bay, because I get to hear it directly from all the investors. Right, guys? You guys agree? You better agree. They're going to be inspecting your properties. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but no, we have, I'll get to that later. I'll tell you what we got. These two departments work hand in hand preparing and expediting plans on various development projects. They are vital in city's journey towards transformation. Nearly $70 million in building permits for new residential, commercial, and industrial construction projects have been issued over the past two years. Think about it, $17 million. I make $61 million a year being the mayor. Imagine these permits. Lewis? Oh, that's right there. Sorry. Developers continue to stream into Hawthorne to take advantage of the opportunities and pro business climate. This management team has created every area as has created. Every area of our city is being revitalized with additions of single family homes, new retail centers, commercial properties. One of the things that I wanted to implement to bring everybody together was called the Guardian Angels. The economic development team meets once a month when a developer comes into town, we put them right in front of us. Doesn't care the CEO of a company, the president, the vice president, the lawyers, of course. And we sit with them and before they present to the city, we can tell them what planning requires, what building requires, what code enforcement requires, what our inspectors require. And they leave with a sense of ownership saying, I want to do business in Hawthorne. So I want to congratulate our guardian angels and our economic development team for that. Thank you. If you've noticed on the north end of Hawthorne, where it used to be the, the site of the Cockatoo Hotel, where Mikey used to play the piano for the original owners, 
is now, now in construction of a 180 unit Comfort Inn, soon to be followed by Candlewood Suites and a Holiday Inn Express. We're welcoming our second Walgreens at the corner of 120th Street and Hawthorne Boulevard, replacing an abandoned car dealership. And I know Evergreen is here, correct? There he is, stand up. Thank you for investing in Hawthorne. Also, our new family members, Northgate Market, which is located on Prairie and Rosecrans. Mr. Gonzalez, please stand. <laughs> Welcome to Hawthorne. And Fusion at the South Bay, Syntex Homes, is going very strong. And if you haven't had an opportunity, look at these homes, please. And that's on um, Aviation and Marine. I'll get my streets right. On the, on the east side, 25 new industrial and professional service buildings are replacing dilapidated manufacturing buildings in the Century Business Center. I'd like to thank Kearney and his team. Thank you very much, Jeff Dreitley. <laughs> Central Park spe specific plan on the corner of 120th Street and Van Ness Avenue, which includes a 140,000 square foot Target store, 176 high-end housing units are under review. We'd like to thank Jeff Lee with Lee Homes. Jeff, thank you very much. <laughs> Site preparation is well underway for the existing 30